Hi, my name is Patty O'Sullivan. We are here today to uh, promote our wonderful event, Connecticut Walks for Haiti, which is going to be held on April 1st this year at St. Peter Claver in West Hartford. Um, this event, it takes place from 10.30 to 2.30 p.m. and it, it's, you know, it has a, a um, a festival, a silent auction, there's a two and a half mile walk through Blueback Square and it helps raise money for six local based charities that uh, benefit Haitians. Um, this organization is, like I said, in its eighth year, um, although this year's walk has special significance since um, it'll be raising money to help the rebuilding uh, efforts after Hurricane Matthew devastated Haiti. Connecticut Walks for Haiti was started eight years ago um, when there are several local residents wanted, who were involved in Haitian organizations wanted to kind of to, to build, pool their resources and make a really great impact um, together than they could by themselves. So they laid out the plans for the walk and St. Peter Cleaver graciously donated the space to have the walk. Um, however, there is no uh, religious affiliation with the walk and three out of our four panelists here were there for, have been there for all eight years. So I'm sure you can maybe speak for, maybe introduce yourself and speak for a, a minute about, you know, how the walk has um, come along in these eight years. Hi, my name is Don Dinsmore and uh, I am part of Haitian Humanitarian Network which runs a medical clinic in a very remote area of, of Haiti. And we have been part of the walk uh, for the last eight years. And the great, there's a couple of great things about it. Number one, the walk itself is just a great, as, as, Su as Susan was saying, it's, a, it's like a festival. There's steel bands, there's music, and it is just a great day to be there. And it's a fun day for everybody to be there uh, along with the walk. Um, we have, uh, use the funds from the uh, walk every year for a special project and it's always done something unique for us given us the capability to do extra things uh, down in Haiti we're a small very small clinic and the money we use there is very impactful so uh, not only is the day fun the money from it is used and it all goes to Haiti. We have no overhead locally, so 100% of the money that is in the uh, grant to us ends up down in Haiti. Awesome. And Sue and Nancy, do you have any input about, you know, any improvements and things you've seen in the past eight years of the walk, since this is the eighth year? Well, the walk itself has grown. Mm -hmm. um, I think it becomes more fun. It attracts people, not only, people and families, not only to walk, but many people attend just for the activities and the festivities of um, the music, the different entertainment, the silent auction. Um, there's some great activities for kids, uh, face painting, uh, Haitian games, which is another thing. So. It's a combination, rain or shine. Last year it rained. It was marvelous. I think we, we filled the hall almost the whole time and the sun shone at least enough to walk. Mm -hmm. um, the steel band, I'd like to just mention that. Last year in the rain, when they were taking a break, um, I actually, one of the band members was playing and it was symphonic. It was beautiful. I think, you know, we've all seen the walk grow over the years, and what I really like about it is that it's a family event, mm -hmm. which is often when you're trying to raise money for things, you often have things that are only for adults, so it's really nice to see the kids come out, and I like the way we've been able to add an um, educational component to the walk with the games, and we're hoping to even add more to that this year. So the kids are also learning about uh, children elsewhere and some of the challenges that they face. Um, and I like it because it's a very diverse um, population sure. that participates in the walk. Um, so I, I really like that aspect of it. 
Great, thank you. So, um, like Don touched on, we do uh, we do benefit six different charities um, that all go down and and help patients out, and they actually go down to Haiti and and put in place programs and clinics. Um, so, those six charities are the Haitian Health Foundation, Medical Aid to Haiti, Haitian Humanitarian Network, Outreach to Haiti, Operation Unison, and Camp Hispaniola. Um, so like I said, these, uh, the support from Connecticut Walks for Haiti goes to help Haitians. Um, they're rebuilding homes and clinics, bringing medical, nutrition, and nutritional and educational services to the vulnerable populations there. Um, Haiti has had major issues it's historically with poverty, unemployment, illness, potable water, nutrition, um, and mortality rates, especially among pregnant women and children. So these six charities uh, have dedicated themselves to helping the Haitians learn how to help themselves um, with their educational, medical, nutrition, and maternity programs. Um, these charities are all based in Connecticut, but members from each charity, as you'll hear from the, the four uh, people we have today have have tr regularly traveled down to Haiti to to make sure that the the clinics are operating. Um, they've run camps. They've worked at orphanages, uh, educational centers, um, and so our panelists will each represent four of the six charities that the walk benefits. Um, and I'll let them kind of speak to speak to their charity more. Um, so I guess maybe do, go down the line and state your name and, the, and your charity and your specific goal for this year and how, how money from Connecticut Walks for Haiti has helped your charity run their programs in Haiti. Again, I'm Don and I, uh, I'm from Haitian Humanitarian Network. We run a clinic in a very remote area of Haiti. It's called the Erlene and RML Clinic. It's all run by Haitian. It's a Haitian-run operation. We fund it, but we do not we do not run it. And the uh, the clinic in the area it's in, if if the clinic wasn't there, and we've serviced uh, over twenty thousand people in the last since we started in two thousand thirteen, if the clinic wasn't there, those people would not have had any medical help whatsoever. So from that standpoint, it's just like. Uh, there, there is no other, they have no other options in that rural part of Haiti. The hurricane, uh, had, had Susan had mentioned before, the hurricane went right over that part of Haiti. Um, almost all the homes were destroyed. The, most of them now are living in tarp, uh, tarp settlements of some kind. And we're in the process now with a lot of other people uh, trying to help them rebuild their homes in, in Haiti. Thanks. Hi, my name is Paola and I am from Operation Unison and we have been part of the walk for three years now. We're going on our fourth and we are incredibly grateful for the funds that we receive. Specifically, Operation Unison right now is working with orphan and vulnerable children that are classified under a term called Restavec. And Restavec means in Creole to stay with. Um, these are children that are given by their biological families to other families uh, in hopes of a better future for them. However, that normally doesn't turn out to be the case. The host families that takes these children, a lot of the times abuse them. They're the ones that are in charge of doing all of the housework. Um, a lot of the times they are never allowed to go to school. So they end up serving the food that they cannot eat. They end up washing the clothes that they can never wear. And they end up living with a family that really never is their own family. So we have been able to collaborate with a large organization that specifically focuses on this population. And the funds have helped us um, with their other organization's efforts really put together a camp for the kids. And I am a certified health education specialist, which means I am qualified to teach um, about health. And I work with these kids to really be able to show them to learn more about their bodies. And they don't get any type of health education in their school systems. So we are able to have the materials. Um, the proper health education materials to be able to provide the best education for the children, as well as an additional bonus, which um, Don was talking about, is to actually be able to hire Haitian staff. So we're able to pay very fair wages to Haitian interpreters that have been with us for several years now to really wow. benefit tremendously from the walk. Wow, that sounds awesome. Um, and I'm sure the, those kids really appreciate all the, the extra education that you're giving them. So, Nancy, go ahead. Hey, I'm Nancy, uh, medical aid to Haiti, um, often referred to as MATH, uh, supports and has worked with over 
I think we started um, actually going down in 2002. Met, uh, math uh, incorporated in uh, 2009. And we provide for a mobile clinic to five, er, five villages in and around Port-au-Prince. Um, otherwise, they had very little health care at all or extensive travel just to get into Port-au-Prince or into a medical clinic. It now also has a freestanding um, medical clinic that oversees the mobile clinic. The mobile clinic app operates out of it. Um, interesting enough, on our first trip, where we brought a medical team down to Haiti to work with a small mobile clinic uh, up, in a mount, or up in a mountain area, our present physician who runs the program was one of our translators. Uh, and he was in medical school at the time. So it's been a long, long history. Uh, primary care is provided to the villagers. Um, they have resources of the clinic itself and uh, laboratory work, but often need to refer out, such as for surgery, such as for diagnostic testing, and that would go off. Um, I'm Sue, and I'm representing Outreach to Haiti. Um, Outreach has been working, as I said before, in Port-au-Prince for about 30 years, and it provides education for about 200 uh, students from kindergarten through university. Uh, the university component is pretty unusual for an education program. We have about 40 students now who are attending college or they're uh, doing vocational school. We also have a clinic that works five days a week, um, mostly um, treating women and children, but there is, I think, one day a week when anyone can come. Uh, part of the, what the clinic does uh, is run a nutrition program for children that are malnourished. So since the hurricane, uh, it's been, there's been a noticeable uptick in people coming in with severely malnourished children, severely being according to like the World Health Organization um, parameters. And this is due in part because Haiti has also been experiencing a severe drought. So there was already um, less food available for the population and with the hurricane, which wiped out so many crops and it hit the breadbasket of Haiti as well, people are even more hungry and it has driven some people into Port-au-Prince because in some remoter areas of the southern peninsula there just really aren't any services there. Um, the other uh, thing that we do is we have um, a twinning program so we have uh, churches and schools that are twinned with parishes in Haiti and Several of the, we have I think about 12 twinning parishes in, in Haiti and some of those were in the hurricane affected areas. One was on the seaside and they lost like 32 fishing boats. So again, livelihoods have been decimated and um, you know, part, uh, part of the, reason, part of the uh, funding that we are, we'll get from the walk will be to, to help um, those outlying parishes that have really been uh, hurt by the hurricane as well as the clinic which is seeing more people come in for services. Perfect, and I'm, I'm so glad you brought up the hurricane uh, because I know all four of you have been down to Haiti in the past and, and some of you have been since the hurricane. What kind of effects have you noticed in, in Haiti and in the areas where your charities serve since the hurricane and in the months since? Have you seen rebuilding or is that not even possible yet because the devastation was so big? Well, it, it comes, uh, it's coming slowly. Yeah. Uh, most, what happened is they uh, passed out tarps to almost all the people. In, in the very remote areas of Haiti, it's a little different than in the cities, where, mm -hmm. like, like uh, Sue said, where people in the remote areas, at least where we are in the southwestern part of Haiti, um, the people are really very resilient and very independent. And they basically what we do is give them the tools to do what they want to do. And uh, some of the pictures we have show uh, a whole side of the mountain where it's just completely cleaned out. And then now you'll see tarp houses there. Yeah. And those will be the, where they live until some of the more, some of the uh, better building materials can be supplied to them. Some of that's already been done. There's a German nonprofit that was passing out uh, metal. 
sheeting and two by fours, and people were starting to build some of their own houses. Yeah, and but you're and looking, you're looking probably at a couple of years before. Yeah, well, gets I know. I mean, that w after the earthquake, I know people ha still hadn't rebuilt by the time the hurricane hit. So right. it's yeah. kind of a double, double hit devastation. Right. So you know, speaking of the rebuilding and. Um, and you know, and, and the hurricane and the earthquake from a few years ago. Um, do any of you have stories or experiences of of the of really uh, witnessing the resiliency of the Haitian people and mm -hmm. and how they've kind of reacted to these tragic events and with hope? Yeah. One of the things um, I'll start with after the hurricane, uh, we were down. Medical aid to Haiti was down, or. Um, Within a, within a month, um, shortly after. And the resilience of watching, and then of course working with the people through the Mobile Clinic, um, the artists had their wares out on the street. You know, there's nobody there to buy them. And although there was a large influx of foreign help, of course they were, Nobody had time to even look. But you saw that resilience. You saw, I remember seeing a man with a wheelbarrow moving a mountain of rubble. Um, wow. It was huge. And just taking what he could and moving it. I don't know where it went. I followed him down <laughs> a street. Um, and didn't say where we're in. But two months later, that mountain of cement was gone. How much was done by him and how much by others. But I had watched this over yeah. a three-month period. Um, I see little changes. Um, I have not been down in over a year and a half. But the changes I see, I am a public health, uh, by profession, a nurse, and their vaccination program. I've seen, which never before, uh, rubbish trucks. Mm -hmm. I see rubbish s cylinders along the street, even attractive in, in some different areas. But you're seeing change to maybe the average person going down one time shot and looking. Um, Haiti still is the poorest poorest country in this hemisphere. Um, but there are changes. It is, it is building slowly. I think yeah. after the earthquake, it just amazed me how people just came together. Like where we were, no international organization came for at least three weeks um, where our building collapsed. And people just pitch in, share food. I mean, it really is something to behold. And we had this very large three-story building that basically they took down by hand with pickaxes. So Haitians are not afraid to work. They'll <laughs> give the opportunities. They will do anything. Things that we probably would never do. But and they, you know, they don't look. They, you know, they're not beefy people because they don't have a lot of food. But they're strong. They're really. They're. I think they're just. You know, in, internally strong too. They've just learned how to cope and adapt to the situations that they find themselves in. So it's very inspiring. Yeah. To add to what Sue was saying, uh, what I was taken aback the most and inspired by the resilience was really seeing how there weren't enough resources right after the earthquake, but there were so many homeless children and families that had their own children to take care of would still take more children in. And you had a family that was originally a five ended up being a family of 10. And they all sat there with whatever they had and they just shared and they knew that somehow they were gonna make it through. Wow, that's, I mean, it's just incredible to hear and so hard to kind of picture what they, what, you know, what they must have been going through and yet they still have a lot of hope, which is, Wonderful to hear. Um, so, like we, you know, like we said, the, uh, the these experiences that you know our panelists have have shared are, you know, an, a direct result from the the money that comes in through through our walk. Um, Connecticut walks for Haiti uh, takes the, all, all of our proceeds and gives them directly to projects that each. Uh, each of these four charities plus the two additional ones 
um, apply for, and those that money goes directly to the Haitian. So all of the changes that Nancy was referencing, those all come through through the money we raise. So hopefully these these stories and these experiences um, have helped you understand uh, where where we're coming from, why we do this, and why Connecticut Walks for Haiti is such a great event. Um, you know, if you want to get involved in this event and, and come and support us and walk with us, or like Nancy said, you don't even have to walk. There's you know so much going on. Um, it is April 1st. Um, our, the registration begins at 10.30 a.m. There's no need to register uh, online ahead of time, but you can uh, go to our, our website. It's ctwalksforhaiti.org, and you'll find more information there. Um, but, you know, we kind of, we've brought it up a little bit, but the, mo the, the walk, there's, it's a walk, it's a festival, there's Haitian food that, that's available for purchase there, there's a silent auction, all of these wonderful crafts that are on display here um, have all been made in Haiti, that, and there are Haitian crafts just like these, although not these because these are <laughs> some of our personal <laughs> ones that we love. Um, our Could I just <laughs> say something about yeah, the Yeah, go for it, sir. So the, the two signature crafts of Haiti are the metal and the paper mache, which that vase is. Mm -hmm. And they were like the original recyclers, Haitian. You know, they just used whatever was available. The, the uh, metal is all made out of recycled oil drums, and they use templates, and they trace the um, templates onto the drum and then they actually cut all of that out with a hammer and a chisel and then fashion it with just with hand tools with nail um, mm -hmm. punches and things like that so it's quite something to to behold and the paper mache again you know there's a lot of trash that's been used to um, turn into something beautiful and that's just you know two examples of how how they recycle um, what's available to them to make to make yeah. crafts and I mean, they're ju just beautiful too, with all the the colors and the 3D. Um, so you know, at at the walk, this is this is my first year on the planning committee, but I've been to the walk um, for the past few years, and I know my favorite part has always been the silent auction because I always <laughs> find something good there. Um, I've got you know, the, the silent auction has tickets to local events. Um, some handmade crafts, some Haitian crafts, but also handmade crafts from people in Connecticut. Um, some, I can't even think, gift cards to local sure. businesses. Um, so there's always, always something good that I tend to find there. And then you feel good about buying it there because it, all the money is going to benefit uh, Haiti. But mm -hmm. what, is, what are all of your favorite parts of the walk? Well, you know, one of the aspects of the walk that we haven't talked about that yeah. I think is important is that when we have hurricanes and, and, uh, and earthquakes, everybody's sort of up on Haiti. But in the, in the years in between, it's sort of lost. And that's one of the things the walk does. It really keeps Haiti, as, as you had started mm -hmm. to mention before, Sue, so in, the, in the early part, is the poorest country in this hemisphere and uh, needs all the help it can get. It just doesn't yeah. have an infrastructure that works very well. If it wasn't for the nonprofits down there, they would really be in trouble. So I think that's one of the prime things that the, the, the walk does. It brings that awareness in a year or a time when perhaps nobody, nobody's thinking of Haiti anymore. So that's, uh, to me, that's one of the most important mm -hmm. parts of it. For sure. Well, one of my particular interests, too, is one, again, the silent auction. Yeah. <laughs> um, because there are some tremendous, tremendous things and buy, really buys. Uh, there's gift baskets to add to that, garden activities, as well as um, last year or the year before, they had um, landscaping, entire oh. landscaping area was one of the auction items. And I think the biggest item, or fun item, is tickets to the uh, Red Sox, Boston Red Sox um, Yeah, game. it's a whole, ex it's not just tickets. There's usually a whole experience. That whole experience. With that, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that's kind of an exciting thing. But I, I, think I really like the music. Um, I think the steel uh, pan ensemble is, is just, just creates that Caribbean atmosphere. Yeah. And then we have uh, Hall Freshman Choir that sings. We have these adorable little Haitians that come and dance. Um, and it's, I, I just really like, it. it's music going on everywhere, Blue Black Square, um, in the, in St. Peter Claver Hall, 
So there's really something for everyone. It's um, and it's it's a very uh, unique experience. I don't think you see a lot of events like this that have that kind of flavor. Speaking of flavor, <laughs> I, <laughs> I love the Haitian food. Uh, it's absolutely delicious. There are plantains and pickles, and we normally have rice and beans as well, and it's absolutely delicious. And it's cooked by Haitians. Yes, it is. We have um, some uh, local, they're local Haitian women yes. um, who come early in the morning and cook for all of us to be able to enjoy that food. So the taste is very authentic. Yeah, so I mean, as, <coughs> as we've kind of all shared that if you think you're coming just for a walk, you'll be very surprised to see there's just a lot more going on. So in the same kind of vein, then if you don't really like want to go on a two and a half mile walk, which is sounds really far, but it's fun. You're all together in a big group. There's plenty for you to do at the church hall while maybe some friends or family go out for the walk. You can stay behind and eat and make sure nobody's outbidding you on the silent okay. auction. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just important that you really show up and, and, and get an idea and, and really kind of get more awareness for Haiti because there's also, you know, I, I think we kind of mentioned before, educational games and especially for children, if you wanting to learn a little bit more about other cultures, it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, I did mention earlier that our website, ctwalksforhaiti.org, has more information on each of the charities, each of the specific goals that they have for this year. Um, it also has a link to our CrowdRise crowd fundraising page um, where you can start a team uh, or, and, and, or just give uh, money that way ahead of time. But like I said, there's no need to feel like you need to register ahead of time. You can show up at 10.30, 11, 11.30, as long as you show up if you want to walk before noon um, and we'll be there all, all afternoon on uh, April 1st. And we have year. sponsors. And yeah, and every year we have sponsors. The Mitchell Auto Group has been wonderful as to us this year. So if you're interested in sponsoring, you can go to our website um, and, and find out more information there. I think one of the other things is, um, and you had mentioned, create a team. Um, this year I'm expecting two sisters are going to see who can outdo the other one. Oh, there you go. Or, you can make it competition. You know, maybe we, maybe, but maybe we could get Hall and Connor to yeah. um, have some competition with a They do, with they do like to compete, so yeah. that's a so very good idea, can, Nancy. And I'm sure maybe some other school groups um, you know, can add that little extra flavor. Yeah. Well, again, thank you for watching. And our website, ctwalksforhaiti.org, has more information and our contact as well.